Normally I drive right past this downtown core every time I'm out here. Today I decided to turn into the downtown section of Nanaimo, BC. <laughs> Boy am I glad I did. I spend a lot of time in Nanaimo. A majority of my winters have been spent on this little section of the island because this is where my shop is at. Nanaimo seems to always be just that little drive through, get your stuff kind of area. But when you actually go downtown, downtown Nanaimo, this place is damn cute. When you get off the ferry coming to the island, Nanaimo and Victoria are your two main points of entry out here from the mainland. When you get to Nanaimo, it is super easy to drive by all this stuff. See, downtown, you don't really have to kind of drive through it. It kind of tucks you around in a way. The road goes right past all this stuff. Make the little pit stop. It's actually really nice down here and I think a lot of people avoid it because there's a lot of homeless people down here. I filmed around all of them this morning just to keep this video looking nice and super pretty. But downtown here is definitely worthy of a little drive through for sure. Over the winter, I spent way more time inside of my shop than I was expecting to, but I was having fun. I just I really enjoyed being inside of that space. But now that the sun's out, I kind of regret all the time that I spent indoors. So next winter season, I'm going to try to explore this island a little bit more. Wow, what a piece of beauty. I've never been down here to the marina. It's amazing. People are coming down here, getting on their tugboats, going to work. People are getting on their fishing boats. Some guy over there on, on, uh, on his little kayak. It's awesome. There's a floating fish and chip place back here that I didn't know about. There's some restaurants, some coffee shops whale watching stuff like lots of touristy things here i had no clue no clue there's a little road on this side that i've driven up and did a little u-turn and taken off but i never made the pit stop to come for a walk definitely way worth it so when i bought my shop van um, i didn't know how i was going to get to vancouver and i looked up harbor air so i guess there's a float plane that leaves from down here somewhere and flies into Vancouver and it wasn't that expensive. I think it was 175 bucks, but what an experience that would be. So it flies out of here, goes to Vancouver Harbor and then you can fly back here. So if you're looking for a unique way to get to the island for a little day trip, Harbor Air might be a fun way to do it. I know that's definitely on my to-do list because man, to see all the Gulf Islands and stuff like that from the air for an affordable trip like that would be so, so damn worth it. It's funny how much time I have spent in the Nanaimo area this winter and never once have I come here. <laughs> I feel so silly. What the heck? With all the colors in there, that looks like a little Mexican place. What am I missing in this town of Nanaimo? A little dog bowl so it's dog friendly. <laughs> what the heck this place looks like fun. Look it. Um, what am I missing? What is it? It's gotta be a little Mexican place. Penny's Palapa, full service Mexican restaurant, takeout and and uh, taco window. I feel, I feel like, I need to start taking my own advice. I always tell people, explore your own backyard first because you wouldn't believe what you're gonna find in your own backyard. <laughs> Take your own advice, Chrome. We, uh, we're definitely gonna come back here for sure. Oh man, look how fun that is. 
Grab yourself some tacos and some tequila right here. Mm. Perfect. Man, I'm glad I came out for a walk this morning. You can take scenic flights into Tofino and also over to the Sunshine Coast, which is over there on the other side. I didn't know that. Oh my friends, we got some things to do when we come back to this island after this travel season for sure. Check that out. Lighthouse Pub. With that freaking view and a giant outside bar. I feel like, uh, you know, after spending close to six years on the road that I'm not very good at this travel stuff. There's those harbor airplanes I was talking about. Man, would that be so much fun. This absolutely gave me a whole new outlook on Nanaimo. How many of you guys have traveled to this island and drove right past all this stuff. I bet you there is tons of them that came out here and you know, because of the downtown kind of looks a little grimy from the outside, but damn, when you pull in here and get down here, wow. <laughs> what was I doing? This whole winter, what was I doing? Like I preach a lot of things around here, but I, I'm not really taking my own advice. So if you get a chance to do any traveling, start in your own backyard. Take this lesson out of today's video at least. Anyway guys, what I really wanted today was to show you guys a little bit of downtown Nanaimo and update you on a few super cool things. Hey bud. I'm absolutely blown away on how beautiful Nanaimo is in that. They have a great big, great big statue. It's Captain Jack Sparrow. I don't even know who that is. In memory of Frank James, officially known as Black Frank. Ooh. From eight from 1918 to 1992. Black Frank. Nanaimo's Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, guys, uh, the point of this video was actually an update. I got some really cool things I wanna let you guys know. You remember that overland gathering that I went to in Ontario last year that I absolutely loved? Man, I would love to be there again this year. It's just that's a huge round trip from BC to, to way out in the middle of Ontario. Uh, but anyway, the crew at Overland North, when they messaged me to invite me back out again this year, sadly, guys, I had to say no. They wanted me to let you guys know about the gathering that's coming up on June. Let me pull out my phone. Let's get this right. Uh, Overland North Gathering. It's at Albion Hills Conservation Park in Ontario, just one hour north of Toronto near a town called Caledon, Ontario. The Overland North Gathering is June 9th to June 11th. And it sounds much like the other one that I went to, but I think this one, this one looks like it's a lot bigger than the other one. So they're doing self, so it's, it's a camp out. You literally bring your vehicles out, you camp out for, for, for the weekend. It's so cool. It was so much fun, you guys. Uh, they're doing self-guided trail rides. And if you caught that video when I filmed at the last one, what they do is they take all sorts of people at different driving skills out on the trail and teach you guys how to navigate those trails over bumps uh, in ruts kind of stuff. So if you're new to being off road, those guys will train you guys a little bit on a, on a, on a trail ride with somebody who's experienced and guide you through little obstacles. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, just a quick picture. They did guided trail rides. They gave you a few options depending on the vehicle that you had. But the trail rides were guided, meaning that if you're a newbie, you had somebody to guide you through any obstacles that you came up to. Was really cool to see.
running around getting shots is not easy. <laughs> uh, 30 hours of clinics on overlanding. That is awesome. For people that just wanna go out there and learn about what it's like to drive your vehicle off-road in the dirt, that is an incredible thing. I'll leave the links to all that stuff down below, but that's coming up on June 9th to June 11th. I'll leave the Overland North links down there. Um, absolutely a rock star crew of people. And I know some people get confused. They're like, I'm in a van, but I go off, off into the dirt in my van. Is this van life or is this overlanding? So if you look at my vehicle, I'm a crossover. I'm sitting there, you know, like I'm, I'm both. Really, if you look at it, I'm both. I like to take my vehicle out there in the dirt. That doesn't mean your vehicle has to be jacked up with all the recovery gear and winches like mine to go to an event like this. You just need to want to go out and spend some time in the dirt, off the grid somewhere, exploring in your vehicle. It doesn't matter if you have a Honda Civic with all-terrain tires. Heck yeah, go, go get it. Um, they're really inclusive out there, so so don't feel like your vehicle should hold you back from going. Um, if you are unsure about an overland event, I will try and link the video down below too to when I was at that event. Awesome, awesome, straight out right, awesome. That's a horrible musical instrument. If that's what that's supposed to be, that's a, that doesn't sound very nice at all. Sorry, Chromie's getting musical. How about this one? It's a drum. Well, the summer's starting to get warm, my friends. So another little update. Um, a while ago, I put a call out looking for an editor for a side project that I had. And I wanna let you guys know that I did find the editor. That side project's already been done. It was just a couple videos that I needed to have edited for a pilot project that hopefully turns into something next year. We will see, fingers crossed. I can't let you guys know quite yet, but if it works out, you darn right to be the first ones to know. Um, so yeah, I needed an editor for that one because I, I edited these videos and I wouldn't have had the time to, to put the heart that that other project needed. So uh, yeah, guys, I wanna thank everybody who put in the time because there was a lot of submissions. We had probably, maybe 150 editors submit videos. It was it was wild. It was a pile of work to go to. So I wanna just thank everybody who, who spent the time to to edit up that, that little piece. Um, it, was, it was really great. I'm sorry I didn't get the chance to respond to all of you, but there was just way too many. I was expecting like maybe 20. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that many, it was insane. Uh, everything from like professional pro editors were submitting stuff all the way down to somebody who wanted to just give it a swing for the very first time. Uh, so uh, sorry I didn't get the chance to personalize every email back. Um, I thought maybe just doing it in a video would be my way of saying thank you guys for all your time. It was hugely appreciated. Um, that video project, I, I hope it turns into something. I really honestly do. Um, I have a lot of really great ideas. Uh, going forward on my channel for for both this channel and just me and my life and the progressions that I want going forward in my in my crazy van life journey as things start to grow and my ideas get bigger and bigger and bigger. I have a nomad from the USA that's coming to my shop that has some mechanical problems and Lauren is going to take a look at the vehicle, hopefully get her fixed up and on the road. So um, that will be coming up in probably the next couple of videos from now. I I'm excited that we get to help somebody before we bounce out on this great big road trip this year. Speaking of the road trip, I don't know where I'm going. All I do know is I am heading north on my travel somewhere. But uh, we're looking like we're at a nasty start to a fire season here in British Columbia. And um, some areas do lock down their backcountry. If it does get really, really dry, they don't want motor, motor vehicle, dirt bikes and me and stuff driving around the trails causing a spark somewhere. Or I'm going to base my travels on where I'm allowed to be and where the least amount of smoke is at. So from what I understand, a lot of uh, that side of BC on the top side... Um, towards Alberta is really really on fire right now and so I think I might stay on the coastal side of BC towards the north where um, where everything seems to look really really good right now 
but we're not really too sure yet. I got a couple more dentist appointments coming up. I'm getting two crowns on the back, two here, and then I'm on the road, which will be an absolute no time flat. I originally thought that I was gonna spend my whole season in the dirt. That was the plan, was to spend a majority of my summer in the dirt, off the pavement. But for some weird reason, I am craving little baby towns. More days like this where you get to explore a little downtown. That's what I'm like, I don't know, I, I change all the time, but that's what I am like searching for right now is, is if I can find a bunch of really cute, tiny little towns with little fishermen wharfs and little antique shops and, and uh, maybe a little flea market or something fun, like small community stuff. I don't know why, but that's what I'm searching for right now. So who knows what we're gonna get up to this summer. I do know that in Northern BC, there's a pile of little cute little towns that we can film, um, but I know me. Chances are I'll probably film five cute little baby towns and then something in me will search out, I need to go play in the dirt for a bit. So guys, stick around, man. We're doing lots of fun stuff this summer. And uh, if there's any places you guys would like me to go check out or visit or any tips or tricks about the Northern BC, by all means, guys, leave them down below. If you're new around the channel, hit that subscribe button. Pretty, pretty, please join the crew. Um, it's great to see things grow around, grow around here. You hear that? <laughs> um, but I appreciate your guys' time. And um, yeah, guys, if you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. Don't miss out. We do crazy stuff around here. My videos go from either being in the dirt, being in the shop, or being in towns like we did here today. Um, always up to something, something crazy as this van life of mine evolves and moves forward. Anyway, guys, peace out. I'll see you guys all soon.